The last four years I ran Living Social in the UK, which was literally um, a business that I, I started in, in, in London, just down the road, Oxford Circus, in a little basement, um, sitting next to a load of Chinese metal traders that were trying to sell tin and iron ore. Um, and I was there trying to talk to London Zoo and try and get them to give 50% off their products. Um, but it was, an, it, was a, it was an amazing journey. It grew from, from me in a little office to a 300 person, 100 million P&L business in a very short space of time. Um, and there's a lot of stories and there's a lot of you know, great things that happened along that route. Um, I've also I was, I had a company in Battersea, uh, which we ended up selling to uh, Microsoft, relocate, the, there were only about 40 of us, relocate the whole team um, over to Redmond, and some of them are still there actually. Um, but the, we, had, we had a great run at Microsoft, we got the best post-acquisition metrics in their history. Um, got an email from Bill Gates saying, brilliant, we love you guys, and you were cheap. Thanks, Bill. Um, but also, so and we were. Damn it, I learned a lesson there. Um, they had more money than we thought. Um, we also, I also sold a financial services company to Thomson Reuters, so I ended up not selling companies, but they were lucky enough to be successful. Um, and uh, I ended up working in the city for about 18 months. Um, and I've also, I used to, when I was a student, I used to sell books door to door in the US. So I used to go out to the US with a team of students, and I was a student, and we used to go and sell books door to door. Um, I don't know why I did that, um, but it was quite fun. And it was 100% it was commission. You didn't know where you were going to be. You ended up going, you had to fly yourself to New York, go to Nashville for sales training. Actually, it's probably a cult, quite frankly. I don't know. We worked 14 hour days, six days a week. Um, you can imagine in the hot Indiana sun, it was hard selling books. But the truth is, um, I learned a lot of lessons doing that. I learned a hell of a lot about selling and even using referrals and trying to get people to do something, trying to influence people to, to, to do what you want them to do in a good way. Um, they weren't encyclopedias, by the way. They were, they were to help kids with their schoolwork. Um, but it was a bit mad, but I, a lot of the things I learned there, which was, which was only five, no, 20 years ago, um, I've actually still exist today. And a lot of the lessons I learned out in the book field in Indiana, where I worked in Boston, it was, um, they're, they're quite telling. And some of those things are actually still, still important in, in the businesses I run today. Um, there's also, I haven't, what I haven't put in there is all the failures that I've had, which are many and varied. Um, I've started quite a few businesses, and there's been a lot of failures on the way. Um, so, you know, it's not all been plain sailing, but ultimately there's also been some, success, some successes. Um, so now, why plan? Um, if you, do anyone know why plan? I, I need more brand penetration than Sage. So put, everyone put the hand up. Go on. Yes, okay. Some of you have. Anyway, we started on, it's a very small business. We've been around about two years. Um, so we're, we're tonight's going out app, Spontaneity. We have a list of curated events, the best things to do in London. I advise you all to download it immediately and start booking and organizing your social life through it. Um, but it's become, ex, it's become an extremely successful business in London. Uh, we've advanced into New York. We just launched Las Vegas. We're also in San Francisco. Um, so that's what I'm currently running at the moment. It's basically ticketing, it's events, it's live entertainment that you can buy in two taps on a mobile. That's the plug for Y Plan. Um, but, so here's some of the advice, and I, I'm not going to go on all day. Um, they're, they're only little snippets. But I, and you guys are in sort of startup land, you may be a bit more evolved than that. And you've probably, everything I'm about to tell you, you've probably intrinsically know anyway. Um, so it, it, it does help, though, to know where you are. Because if you're, certain, if you're in the startup world, and you may have seen this, you may have read about this, but I've always used like, that, 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 that technology adoption curve. And it's slightly outdated now. And it's, it, it, it's, but it, it does help you understand where you are. Because if you guys are small businesses, startups, you, you'll be acquiring new users now, innovators, people that actually take technology first. And if you want to be a big business and you've got plans for world domination, which I'm sure I can see in some of your eyes you probably do, and good on you, you should have, um, you're going to have to deal with the fact that not every customer you have is an early adopter and is an innovator. And you're going to have to figure out a way to capture um, a core market of users, capture a mass market of users. And it probably isn't the current way that you're doing. Um, and, and I've been in many startups where I've spent, you know, I've spent three weeks trying to figure out what my business card looks like. And actually, that's not helpful. What really is helpful is to understand where you are in your adoption curve. If you have a product or service, some of you may not have a product or service yet, but understanding where you are in that, in that technology adoption curve, and as, as, as small businesses or people that are just starting up in, in the world, then you, your customer base are innovators. And these guys are great because they'll always pick up new technology first. They'll, they'll be very vocal. They'll tell you what they think of the product very quickly. You may have had some emails from people or tweets or whatever else. Um, <coughs> but they don't stay forever. They leave. They go on and do other things because there's always some other shining light that they want to go and, go and look at. So you have to understand that, and that's great, because you can take a lot of information out of you. They'll be your biggest vocal fans. I think Apple's probably done the best job of any company on earth to actually keep that, those early innovators as part of their core offering and use them to, um, to scale up and, and, and deliver. Um, 
Have you, have you guys ever, do you know the game Minecraft? Okay, so that guy, I, I, I talked to the guy that, that distributes it the other day. I went out to lunch with him, and he, lit, he doesn't know what to do with the money. He literally has no idea. Um, so he, but, and he just uses a network of um, sort of, you know, 15 to 18-year-olds on YouTube that, that evangelize his product for him. So every time there's a new release, he gives it to that beta crowd, and they just absolutely, you know, are vocal about it, and they share, you know, they, they, they put it online, they, they test it, and they have this huge following. He has no PR, no marketing, and he can't sell it. He doesn't know what to do with the cash coming in, literally. That was his biggest problem. That's a nice problem. Um, but, he, but you can utilize those innovators. They're very, they tend to like to talk to people. So just know where you are, and at some point, you are going to get to to that chasm crossing moment. I don't know if you guys have, have read this, but it's a moment that, like, unless you have, you own a niche market, or you, you have a, you have, you own, your, your business stands for something, you, you're, ne you're never gonna, you're never gonna grow it. You're never gonna evolve it like you want to evolve it. So it's just, you've really got to focus in the early days and figure out, okay, this is what we're gonna do, and this is how we're gonna do it, and actually go for it. And there's all sorts of different, I mean, everyone says to you, you'll go to all sorts of different conferences, and people say, you've got to strategize, you need time out, go and, go and do some blue sky thinking, whatever they say. But the truth is, you know, you've got to fix, like, they may not have Wi-Fi, you've got to make coffees. So, but ultimately, you'll get, to, you'll get to a point where you need to own something. 